the orientation in just a moment. The um, facilitators today, my name is Carolyn Peterson, and I'm the Assistant Program Manager here at the Washington State Library. And I'm also uh, an association for rural and small libraries board members, which is how I met Chris. And I heard his program last year at the Association for Rural and Small Libraries program and thought it would be a great one to um, have other people benefit from. And from the size of our audience, I think that's a great one. Jennifer Fenton my, um, is co-director of this continuing education program with me, but she is on vacation today. So the folks who are helping you today are Joe Oliver, our technical producers, and Jeremy Stroud. And they, we are both having a lot more folks having audio problems than we normally do because I'm guessing that this is their first time using Blackboard. So we have folks um, doing that, and both Jeremy and if, if you will copy down both their emails and their phone numbers, then you can see um, how to get in touch with them if it doesn't work. So we wanted to say that, of course, who is uh, sponsoring this? We always like to say that libraries are free, but we know that they aren't. So. Um, we are here at the Washington State Library. We are part of the Office of the Secretary of State. And we receive our funding uh, from the state, the state of Washington. But the great majority of the library development funds come through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And we'd like to um, acknowledge that right now. So now I'm going to check back in with uh, Jeremy and Joe and see if they are ready to um, I'm just going to click back through the slides, and we'll get right back to here. And um, I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to describe, because I assume Jeremy is going to break in and tell me when he's ready to, um, done helping folks, so I'll do a quick tour. You notice the talk button is um, circled in on your screen, and that is if you have a, a, a web mic and you want to talk, click there. And then directly below the red circle I'm is actually, our chat bar. And you, I'm back now. Are you ready? Yes. OK. I so believe you so. Sorry about uh, Last minute tech support problems are always fun. Um, so uh, as Carolyn was mentioning, there's the talk button. You, it's a toggle. You press it once. It turns on your microphone. You can start speaking. You press it again to turn it off. Uh, below the talk button, let me pull out my little finger here. We have the participants panel. And there are a few options here that I would like you to be aware of. The first one being the emoticon icon. Uh, you can change, or you can set up an emoticon uh, throughout the session. It just shows up for about 10 or 15 seconds. Let's us give, uh, lets you give a little feedback to the presenter, lets us know where you're at on things. Um, and it's always handy. It's just a nice way, you know, something makes you laugh, do an LOL or applause. Or if you're confused, please uh, feel free to go ahead and mark that. We'll We'll notice it and see if we can clarify the situation for you. Our next button over is the away button. That's if you step away from your, your computer for a little bit. We know not to, to call on you for anything. You'll notice a few people down below here are marked as away current, uh, in this screenshot. Now, this third button is a very important one. If you do wish to use your microphone today, we just ask that you raise your hand. And you do that by clicking this button here. It will put you into a queue, and we'll call on you in order. And the last button, uh, but not least, is the polling button. Uh, if we ask you to do a yes, no poll, a green check for yes, red X for no, you will find that right here. And down along the bottom, we have the chat window. Uh, you just click into it, type out your message, and press the return key to send it. So I hope that everything goes smoothly here. We're having some troubles with uh, audio still, it looks like. We're going to see if we can get those cleared up. Um, but I won't hold anybody else back. So we're going to go ahead and, and push on. Carolyn, you've done the rest of the intro slides, correct? Yes, I have. I did the rest of the intro slides. So now. Um, I think that would you the one slide I haven't done is no we need to collect oh. the um, the there we have of course like many we need to document our outputs and so we would really appreciate it if you just take a moment to type in the, your name and then your library organization so if you could do that then once you've done that we'll give people and we can tell you're typing so just tell us where you're from um, and if there's also if there's like if you're listening and there may be on a, and you have speakers on the uh, 
computer. And there are three people, we'd love to know that. But if you just tell us where you're from, that would be great. We'd really appreciate it. So I see more and more folks are doing it. Chris, I can tell you're just a bestseller here, 58. This is, this is a topic that many of us have trouble with. Um, I know I go out and help uh, small rural libraries read their collections all the time. And I frequently hear from them, it's just so hard for me to get rid of my books because you know they feel like our children. We've, we've collected them. We've worked hard to get them. So great. Folks are, I don't see, let's see, I'm just going to click through and see if I see anybody still typing. I don't. So given that, I am going to start here. And I would like to introduce Chris Rappel. And Chris received his master's uh, in library science from Florida State University. And he has worked for the Central Kansas Library System since 1989. And over the years, Chris has posted tools which he hopes that librarians will find useful. I, when I put Chris's name in, I got mouse aerobics, what librarians, libraries can use from, learn from bookstores, and things that make libraries look stupid. <laughs> Those are things we obviously need to correct. His latest donations are collection manager and shelf shuffler. And these are being used now to evaluate libraries in the central Kansas library system. And the library uh, link is right there. And so you can download this um, the spreadsheet now because the, um, the examples will be discussed in PowerPoint. And I think what I'm going to say is I understand that uh, Jeremy is going to monitor the chat. And so if you have a question for Chris as he moves through his presentation, don't hesitate to put it in chat. Raise your hand. And Jeremy will um, catch it and then uh, gently interrupt Chris so he can answer your question. And with no further ado, I'm going to turn the mic over to Chris. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, Karen. And thank you, Jeremy, for um, allowing me, uh, giving me this opportunity to um, share uh, this tool I use. Uh, this tool I use on uh, f um, a tool I use to evaluate um, our Central Kansas Library libraries. I guess I need to ask: um, Can everybody um, hear me? Okay. If you um, can, please type yes. Let's make sure that my voice is my voice. Um, um, okay. Great. Okay, um, collection manager. Um, I'm going to be displaying it um, in the PowerPoint here. Uh, the URL that's on the screen, um, if you, uh, it should open. It is an Excel document. It should open in Excel. Um, it may be that your Excel. Um, so I would recommend saving it. Um, when you download it, you need to type the link here um, into the web browser. It will download, and you save that file, and then open it in Excel. Um, if you do not have Excel, it should also op uh, open and work in um, Open Office. Uh, but I will be showing it here um, so you'll be able to see it just fine. So let's go ahead and get started. Usually when um, pr most presentations, most workshops dealing with weeding talk about how to select specific titles to weed. In this webinar, we're going to step back uh, from the trees of deselection and look at sort of the entire forest of our collection. And we're going to use a tool I created to look at that forest and, and do an analysis which will help us find out which trees uh, we should be weeded and which trees we should expand by buying more titles uh, this year than we purchased last year. Um, it's free, and it's on that URL. So why should I use um, Collection Manager? OK, let's see here. What is um, librarians um, observe the check-ins and check-outs from their library, and most feel they know uh, which collections are popular and which collections are not popular. Collection Manager uses numbers to give us a more precise measurement of what is popular and what is not popular, and how, po how popular the collections are relative to each other. And we use this precise uh, measurement, or collection manager uses this precise uh, measurement, 
to make a, to, to, for a link between collection size, the circulation for the past year, and the number of titles uh, purchased during the past year to make a recommendation about which collection should be weeded and by how much, and which collection should be expanded and by how much. And so this gives, and it will then eventually even recommend the approximate number of titles that you should purchase in each of the collections. Collection Manager also does these precise measurements also allow us to do one other thing, and that is look at the small collections, the efficiency of small collections. Uh, quite often, uh, the circulation from small collections is very small relative to the, the total circulation of the library. And so library staff may overlook how effective and efficient these collections actually are. And by that I mean that um, for the, that these small, some of these small collections may have actually very high circulation um, given the number of small number of titles. And so collection manager, manager can help us identify those small collections which should, uh, we should provide continuing and maybe increased support. So let's look at how um, collection manager actually works. I'm going to now go to um, collection manager and application sharing. And there we are, and there it is, uh, Collection Manager. Okay, here we are. Uh, can you all see? Chris, can you minimize the Blackboard Collaborate window there? Yes, I can. Thank you. So can you all see, um, I guess, uh, since it's minimized, I can't. Um, can you all see the, the spreadsheet? Type in yes, or do the little green check. Okay, yes. So here is the spreadsheet, and it's blank. And um, right now, this is the template, and it's blank template. If you'll notice, along the bottom are various examples of how I have used uh, various examples of of, of my analysis um, using uh, Collection Manager. So let's start. Uh, we're going to work our way from the left to the right through the columns. Uh, column zero here uh, lists. The, um, the collections uh, that we want to analyze. Now, these collections are from our own um, regional catalog. So they contain, some of these collections are ones which are libraries, which are, some of our libraries don't use very often. So your collections, you would list on, on column zero the collections you actually want to analyze. And it could be actually the collections, it could be shelf locations, it could be item types. You should mix those, you should choose either collections, item types, or um, shelving locations. But you should also, they should also be ones where the, um, your, your reports in your catalog will actually um, be effective in measuring um, what is um, circulating and what is added and, and the size. Of that of that collection, so you type in uh, what you want to measure, and then um, you're going to do uh, three reports, which you'll type the numbers for the three reports in this column one, column two, and column three. The first report is the collection size, and so you'll get the collection size, and you type in the numbers, and as you type in the numbers, it'll total up the num the total numbers that you've typed in in that column. Then you do another report for the circulation by collection for the past year. And as you type in the numbers, it will total them up at the bottom. And finally, you do a report for the, the number of titles added for each collection during the past year. You type in the numbers, and it will total them up. There's formulas in the rest of the spreadsheet, in all the cells in the rest of the spreadsheet. So as you type in these numbers, uh, the rest of the spreadsheet is automatically filled out. Now, I don't want to type in a bunch of numbers, so I'm going to come over here to example one, and I'm going to copy uh, these numbers. And I'm just going to paste them into our template here. And zap, there it is. So it's filled out. 
and it's it's now ready for your interpretation. Now, some of these things, uh, this is BBM, is books by mail. We don't have enough ebooks, Espanol. So I'm just going to take out these rows because I don't care about them. Also, down here, here's online, here's reference. Um, I don't want to do, I don't want to analyze the reference collection that here for this purpose. The regional ones are is a local, is a like local um, Kansas collection. I don't want to deal with this one. So I'm going to take these out as well. I'm going to do vertical map. I'm going to do, so I'm going to take out all of these. And so this gives us something, I'm going to take out this one. This gives us something uh, that more like what your collection will look like because um, you will type in here the actual stuff that you analyze and it'll produce uh, numbers, a spreadsheet that looks something like this when you type in these numbers. So now I'm ready to do my interpretation. But first I'm going to explain kind of how um, Collection Manager works. As, as I said, as you type in the numbers, it totals them up along the bottom. It uses these numbers and those totals to produce the percentages in the next three columns, columns four, five, and six. So this is the percent of the total. So it took this number, 540, and divided it by 14,000 to produce this percentage. It took 636 and divided it by 19,000 to produce this percentage, and 120 divided by 3,000 to produce this percentage. And it does that all the way down the spreadsheet. Now, collection managers, collection manager, the analysis of collection manager assumes that the collection is most efficient if these percentages are approximately equal across the columns. Let me explain the reasoning behind that assumption. Let's look at, um, I'm going to take out the music here too, since we don't. Let's compare movies and nonfiction. So here we're looking at, we're going to look at, we're going to compare these and these. This shows, this number shows that 19% of our collection is nonfiction, but only 5% of our circulation, our total circulation, is in nonfiction items. This would suggest that there are lots of nonfiction books that are, remain on the shelves uncirculated. This shows that this would suggest that maybe um, this collection is, this size of collection is maybe slightly wasted space. Compared to, let's say, the movies. Here in the movies, we can see that almost 10% of our collection is movies, but almost 30% of our circulation is in movies. This shows that the circulation of movies, especially when compared to nonfiction, is much, much better. In fact, if this configuration suggests that nonfiction is underused, this configuration may suggest that the movies are overused given the size of the collection. So it would be better, these kinds of configurations up here seem to suggest a better match between the percentages of the total collection and the percentage of the circulation. Over here, now let's look at, um, let's move over here. We do have a question from Anthony. Okay. Well, okay. Oh, here. Oh, do, you don't have to just I jump over. See Go the, I can't see Go that. ahead and stay where you're at. Uh, Anthony, what is your question? Oh, is the checkout period for movies the same as books? Sorry, he had it typed in. Oh, um... Uh, uh, in this case, I do not know. Um, um, this is somebody else's collection, so I don't know. This is, um, I haven't any idea. 
I haven't any idea. Okay, uh, to return. So now let's compare um, the these two columns. And this shows the percent added, uh, total added, of uh, percent of titles for each collection of the total added during the year. Okay, so um, this number shows for nonfiction, 15% of the titles added were to support a large collection which only receives 5% um, of the circulation. 14% of the titles was to support a smaller collection which receives 30% of the circulation. I would suggest that uh, the reasoning goes that these, this 15% is probably more support than nonfiction needs for this amount of circulation. This suggests, this number suggests that maybe 14% uh, is not enough support for this amount of circulation. Over time, this amount of circulation on this size of collection may um, um, eventually, all the t mo most of the title will be um, circulated and so possibly, so you need to buy more titles than you have in the past. So that's the reasoning um, behind the assumption that these titles, uh, these percentages should be approximately equal. And that reasoning is actually measured and carried out over here in column 7 and column 8. Column 7 looks at, compares, or, or does a, um, a subtraction between the circulation minus the collection. And when the, when the circulation is lower than the collection, you have a minus number, suggesting um, that the, the, the collection is larger than it needs to be to support this amount of circulation. When, the, in this case, the circulation is larger than the collect, percent of collection, you get a positive number. When these numbers are great, when the positive and negatives are very large, I put them out, I put them in red to emphasize the green, oh, sorry, not just red, but in color. The green means that it's a popular collection, and the red suggests that this collection should be weeded because the, because the amount, the percent of the collection is much higher than the amount of circulation, and so it suggests that possibly about approximately this percent of this collection should be weeded. The same thing with uh, young adult. Over here in column eight, we are looking at the, we are subtracting um, the total added from the total circulation, the percentages of the total added and the percentage of the total circulation. When the added is larger than the um, circulation, you produce a negative number suggesting that you should buy fewer titles. If the, the added is less than the circulation, you get a positive number, over here positive numbers, suggesting you need to buy more. And when these numbers are, when the difference between the two numbers is large, again it's colored. And this one, the red in this case, means that the, you should buy fewer titles next year in this collection, and the green means you should buy more titles suggest you should buy more titles. You, these, in this case, in this particular example, we, if at least for the colored ones, everything seems to agree. But you, you can see, for example, um, I think example over here, uh, example three, example four, you can actually get differences. Over here, for example, this one, column seven is red, and column eight is green. So you can get what appear to be contradictions. Here, for example, is a, what appears to be a small one. You have a negative number suggesting that 
or this is kids' books, suggesting that kids' books should be weeded, but more, this positive number suggests you should buy more kids' books. So the interpretation of this configuration would be that you should weed the old books and buy more new books. That is not that kind of recommendation of buy, of weeding the old and buying the new is not actually a contradiction, though it may appear to be so here in this in these columns, but it's actually not a contradiction. Now, I would like to move to column nine. Column nine, uh, these columns seven and eight were column seven and eight. We're looking at using these columns to do our analysis and making and making these kinds of recommendations. Column nine looks goes back to columns one and two, and does a different kind of calculation to give us what I consider a second opinion. This um, divides call the circulation by the collection size to give us the circulation turnover rate. And um, if uh, the circulation number and the collection size were exactly the same number, this number here would be a 1, meaning a pro on average, um, each book checks out once each year in, during the year. That would, of course, be an average. Some books wouldn't check out at all. Other books would check out twice. So the one is, uh, means that every book is checking out approximately once. When the number is greater than one, that implies that um, the circulation is more than uh, that every book is going out more than once a not every book, but some of the books are going out more than once a year. So a higher number is good. Down here, when the number is below one, this suggests that the that the number of that fewer that on average every book is going out less than once a year. And so the 0.4, if it was 0.5, uh, these, these numbers would actually, this number would be 50% of this number. So the, point, so the numbers less than one are bad. So more than one is good, below one is bad. Now, I use, this is a different way of, of uh, a different kind of calculation, looking at your circulation a different way. These numbers are percentages based on your totals of the columns. These numbers are simply um, dividing across these two columns. So it gives a different way of looking at your um, circulation and, your co and compared to your collection size. So I, since this is a different, I see this as a second opinion of the recommendations made over here. Let's look, for example, at these two red ones. This red one and this red one imply that you should buy fewer titles. Fewer titles for the fiction, fewer titles for the nonfiction. But let's compare the fact, and so that suggests that that's the same kind of recommendation for fiction and nonfiction. But let's compare it with our second opinion. Over here, um, for the nonfiction, the nonfiction is 0.4, so it's below one, so that's bad circulation, and that reinforces uh, this recommendation of buying fewer titles. However, if we look up at fiction, 1.5 is actually pretty good circulation. And this would suggest, this would kind of, in my opinion, negate this, this opinion. This would be a second opinion that would negate this. So I would think, I would interpret as meaning I would either, either ignore this recommendation and continue buying the same number of titles as I did before, or 
if if there was some other ones that I wanted to buy more of, say more movies, I might shift a little, little bit of the money down here to the movies, but not reduce the number of fiction titles, the purchase of fiction titles by near 8%. On this one, uh, since I would go with it, I should say that I would be shifting money from buying um, nonfiction to the movies. So you shift money from the red to the green. We shift money from the red to the green. Now, uh, so so that, so I use it in that way to give a second opinion on these recommendations. I also use it for I talked about in my introduction talking about we can spot small collections. And this right here is what I'm looking at. Right here. We do have a, a couple of comments, Chris, if you have a moment. Okay, yes. Uh, first off, from Susan, she says this information could help a director play up a small, uh, or play up some of the less used collections in a small library. At least we can steer patrons towards those collections, promote them in our newsletter, etc. Yes. That's a very good point. Uh, Anthony, uh, he was actually commenting earlier that, uh, and a couple people were echoing this, they'd really like to see some sort of implementation of um, of lending times put into this, because that may impact how the numbers play out. Uh, and he has his additional comment in here is, maybe instead of buying fewer nonfiction, you should buy a different sort of nonfiction. For example, less literary criticism, more gardening. And that was, I, uh, I, go ahead. I agree completely, and I was going to address that. Um, near the end. But I think that's an excellent observation. I think both of those are excellent observations. I don't know how to put lending times in here yet, um, but um, I think lending times would affect circulation. Um, but I will, I will dr address those a little bit later at the end. Uh, we have a couple more. Um, Deborah okay. said yes, the age. And they all just came in all at once here. Um, yes, the age and quality of the collection will have something to do with circulation also. It's a very good point. Uh, and Susan says, could be helpful to break down nonfiction by Dewey slash LC. Yes, I agree completely. I have actually done that. Um, I have actually done that in, in, my, in my analysis, and you could certainly do that. Um, yes, and you can do, obviously do collection manager do that. I have done that to identify which of the collections, which of the nonfiction collections um, do circulate. And I can list those. I can't do that right now, but I could list it in my, in, the, in some sort of follow-up. But that was sort of general across all our libraries. And you could do it for the specific library. So yes, you could do those. So um, you're actually getting to the point. Um, you're actually, the, 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 uh, the listeners are actually making a point which I wanted to make at the end is that you should not take these recommendations as, as uh, flat out, but you need to interpret them to, uh, you need to interpret them to, to uh, help you think about your collection. Okay, can I continue? Uh, actually, we have a couple more that have come up in the meantime. Okay. Um, yes. So Deborah said we do that also. Technology call number need need to be weeded. Uh, that's referring to the earlier comment, I guess. Um, Anna Romero uh, Figueroa says, are these numbers based on annual or monthly reports? For example, only 120 audio book were added in the course of one year or so one month. Um, Anthony okay. clarified that, I guess, with yearly. Uh, it depends on your library is how I would assume this would be. Uh, if you want to analyze it monthly, you can, but. You you could um, it seems this seems to be a lot of work from well these actual reports once you um, the in our in our collection or in our catalog the added uh, these two circulation collection size and circulation could be re easily done with the reports we already had uh, this one for that number of titles added per collection had to be written by our staff so that we could produce this report. But once these reports are created, um, once these reports are created, uh, this is easy to do. You do the report and slap it in. And so I could do this whole, uh, this whole thing um, in about five minutes or less. Um, and then you, then you have your analysis. So you could do this on a monthly basis, though it does seem to me a little bit of an overkill. I'm not sure. Maybe not. Maybe every six months. I was thinking of doing this annually, um, not monthly. 
Um, and as you say, these are monthly statistics. So the reports that uh, the reports are ones in which I actually type in the range of dates I want to collect the figures from. So I could do this. Uh, I could go back several years and ask for all of these. Uh, well, the collection size, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, the collection size may be a problem. Um, but but I, for at least for these two, I could go back and do them uh, for the past three years, um, the circulation and produce reports every year to see if there's a trend, to see how effective uh, this method is. Are there any other comments? Anne appears to be typing, but I believe she's actually had something in there for a while. A couple people appear to be typing. Heidi says, does this assume that your budget is the same from one year to the next as the number added to the collection is the same in column 3 and 10? Of course, different items cost different prices. That is true. Uh, this, um, I have I have thought and thought of how to put in titles. That would complicate. Um, uh, the answer is no, it does not make any of those assumptions. It's going to make recommendations here at the end of the number of titles, but you're certainly right that if you shift uh, shift from buying, say, nonfiction to movies or something, there you will not be able to, uh, there will be a difference in the cost per title. Um, I can't figure out how to uh, put that in um, in any simple way. It would make the process so complicated. That is an administrative task uh, rather than a collection development. I'm working on collection development process, so then you have to move it over to the uh, the administrative part, which handles the budget and the finances, um, to to work out how to implement these recommendations. So these are all excellent questions. Um, this spreadsheet cannot provide those answers. That is a different. I'm going to claim that that's a different task. It's going to have to be. I cannot make a spreadsheet that will. Because you're going to have you're going to have changes in say the prices of the titles and it's going to be ongoing and I can't figure out how to put that in and it will vary depending on your vendor what your library where your library buys stuff and uh, it's something that's too complex for my programming skills I can't do Just, that uh, I might be able to help you out with this one later okay. on I have an idea on sure. how to implement that. Heidi does say, uh, so it wasn't intentional that these numbers are the same. And I believe you mentioned earlier these numbers are for somewhere, from somewhere else. This is their actual collection stats. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. They are, they are actual, they are, yes. I can't remember what library now, since I've changed it to just example one, I don't remember what library. But yes, these are, all these examples are real library stats. I believe that's okay. So uh, I'm continuing. I was looking at. So I told you that I use this column nine to give a second opinion on the recommendations for column eight and maybe for column seven. And so I, I, I used these, these red, compared the red here, and how the column nine, um, how it makes a difference of whether or not I would, or how far I would implement the recommendations in this column eight. Earlier in, in my introduction, I talked about that one of the things collection manager can do is to focus in and identify the small collections, which are actually very efficient. And this here is an example. This is, if we look across, see that this is the large print collection. It's small, and so the circulation uh, as a total, as a part of the total circulation, is very small. But over here, this 3.0 shows that in fact the large print collection is actually the second most efficient collection in this library. Given the circulation is the second best, 
even though the collection is very small. It is twice as efficient, for example, as uh, fiction, which has large circulation. So uh, we so that this number would suggest that we could we should continue supporting um, buying more large print and maybe even buying more large print than is recommended here. So this helps identify which small collections are actually worth um, continuing to support. It's worth the large print is more important, seems to be more important, for example, uh, than your audiobooks in terms of efficiency, the number of circulations you get per title purchased. Column 10 takes some of these numbers and makes recommendations on approximately, or makes suggestions, ballpark figures about how many titles to be purchased in the coming year. It should say that if we look at one of these, we can see how this is calculated, and that's kind of important. Um, it's what it does is that it adds uh, this percentage of whether you buy more or fewer, and it adds it to the percentage of what was purchased last year, and it multiplies it times the total number of books purchased last year. And so it produces this number, and the total, so the totals, and it's done for each of these, and you'll notice that the total for what it's recommending is the same as last year. So obviously that can't be true, but it's, the, so the purpose is that this is kind of a ballpark to give you a flavor, a feeling of the difference in purchasing. And if you compare the recommendation here, the number of titles recommended that you print, that you uh, purchase in the future, with the number of titles you purchased in the past, you can see the, in some cases, radicalness of the recommendation. For example, movies, it's recommending that you purchase more than twice as many movies as you did last year. Um, the, it's recommending that you purchase um, um, a, 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 some smaller fiction, but you can change that and, and uh, change that if you wanted. You can see for the, if we look at the nonfiction, we produce a lot fewer nonfiction. We purchase a lot. It's recommending we purchase a lot fewer nonfiction books than we purchased last year. So that kind of is puts us in the ballpark of what its recommendations would be based on really these numbers, this number and that number added together. So now I wanted to um, any kind of uh, analysis like this is subject to the old thing of garbage in, garbage out. And so there's two kinds of garbage. And really the garbage we're talking about for the garbage in, we're talking about garbage that would be in these reports over here in columns one, two, and three. And I see two kinds of garbage that could appear that you can that you need to take into account. The first is, is that in, especially in this first report, we are adding up the number of titles, the number of catalog records linked to of each of these collections. Some of these um, catalogs, some of these catalog records will be for items that probably, uh, for items that are no longer on the shelf. Um, items that are, have been um, uh, considered lost, have been marked as lost, items that have been marked as missing, items uh, that may have been weeded, but uh, the library staff didn't go and actually delete the catalog record. So there could be quite a few of those titles, and so you need to do, before you do this analysis, you need to do a report about how many missing, uh, how many missing, how many lost items there are, and um, you either have the option of deleting of those records and then redoing the report, or when you do the report, reduce these numbers over here by the amount that is marked missing and lost, at least something uh, of that, so to make these numbers 
accurately reflect the number of items on the shelf that can be circulated. If you do not do this and you count a bunch of, of titles, catalog records for items that aren't on the shelf, it messes up um, your analysis over here in column 7, which compares your collection size and your circulation. It also messes up um, the analysis on the turnover rate, the collection turnover rate, because it's comparing circulation and collection size. And if you have a bunch of titles here, um, if you count a bunch of, of catalog records uh, that don't have titles that can circulate, it's going to make these numbers, especially in column 9, uh, look really bad. Um, and so you need to do something to make sure that these numbers that these, these numbers reflect items that can be actually circulated. The second kind of garbage that can happen is that we are counting the number of catalog records that are linked or that are identified with these collections. I have seen examples in our libraries where the cataloging was such that they skipped over that step and that the, the record was put in, but there was no link to any of these uh, collections. In which case, when you do your report, none of these, it's not going to calculate that title for the collection size or the circulation or for the added collection. So you need to do a search for, um, for, for, the, catalog, for the catalog records in which the collection is blank. And you need to go through those titles and identify, link those titles um, with one of these collections. And when you do that, it will make, it will correct your report and uh, it will read, read done the calculations and will add those in for all these, even if you're doing it, you know, back, we're doing it a year ago, uh, the past year, it won't, it won't matter. It'll pick those up and, and measure them correctly because it's, it does know how many times that book has gone out or when, or when that book was added to the collection. It just doesn't know what, ca what, what collection it belongs to. So it will correct. So, that, so you need to do those kinds of things first to do a little bit of analysis, cleaning up your catalog to make sure your reports report accurately. And then finally, uh, the, the last thing is um, that um, I want to say that this, this, kind, this method is a magnifying glass, not a guru. And that goes, and that refers to the same kind of things you were doing um, when you were making suggestions. Um, you need to interpret what you see and what could be the, the issues for, say, low circulation. And you mentioned some, the, the low circulation would, would be affected by the number of, uh, the length of time that an item is, uh, is checked out. It would, may also be affected by the location of the, of the collection. We know that items in the, or collections in the front of the library circulate better than collections in the back of the library. So moving the collection around may correct the, the circulation. Um, we also know that uh, bad titles, titles uh, improperly um, uh, or, or bad selection, um, the not what people want, can also affect um, the circulation. My point, the point here is that collection manager can help you identify what the problem is. You, if you think that the circulation is caused by the location in the back of the library, you can move the collection up front and then use this kind of analysis several, six months later, a year later, to see if the collection has improved, if the circulation for that collection has improved. Um, um, and so the same thing with the titles. You can weed and you can weed the titles, and then buy more new titles and see if the collection is improved. So, you, so this is used as a magnifying well, we glass. We do have uh, a couple of comments here. Data to, um, to actually, to perfect. See you just told them up. You can see them down in the chat if you uh, expand that window. But uh, okay. the first one 
Deborah, we, we have been worried that we need sure. to read our juvenile nonfiction because it is old, but also needing to add more because of the emphasis on Common Core. We are a curriculum materials library and support the College of, College of Education. Now, um, reading that comment, my first thought was column 7 might show a negative number, i.e. weed, but column 8 will show a positive number, meaning add. That's if uh, if the data from the report here supports what she's thinking with weeding but still adding. Is that correct? Um, of course, you need to look at how, um, uh, um, uh, you need to look at how this number column eight was created. Um, this assumes column eight assumes that you're that you're not buying enough titles to support the circulation. If you're buying enough titles to, uh, if you're wasting, um, um, it, it may not have that. It may not have that pattern. It could be that both numbers are negative. Your circulation is low. And your your number of titles are low um, because you're not still not okay. buying enough um, titles. We also have Becky Tucker. She said um, or, we had a number of yeah, undefined items that, right, that that work, and have almost identified all of them. That's good. Um, Beth Kelly says, as a first year director, this tool will be fantastic and easy to use. Deborah, we actually just did that with our audiobooks and our collection of graphic novels. Um, I assume that's going back and uh, referring to identifying. Categories. Let me, then, I'm not very happy with my uh, with my analysis. Let me because you're. Um, let me think about that a little more about what the pattern might be. Um, uh, uh, definitely, um, you need to weed, and if you buy more, um, you, you. I'm not. I'm not absolutely sure it would show the pattern of of uh, of. Uh, you said that it would be red here, and I think you said it would be green over here on the column eight. Is that what you said? And that was my interpretation based on what you said earlier. But that um, merely my it could well be taking from what Deborah had said. Yeah, it could be, but it, the, both of them could be both of them could be red too. I mean the the one here um, where it says to buy new books that only that that number the green only comes if you have uh, been purchasing fewer books than support your circulation. So it not necessarily is the situation that Deborah's in um, may not be that situation. I was just pointing out that sometimes you get those contradictions. It Understood. could be as in the case of the one below where they're both where they're both red. Okay. So I'm not sure that it would necessarily be green telling you to buy more books. In this case, because here in this case, you're buying books for another purpose other than the mere circulation. You're buying sure. it to meet curriculum needs of the common core. You need to have those books regardless of their circulation. Deborah also think that's what that means. Deborah also has a follow up at the bottom. It says word of mouth lets us think students think our stuff is outdated. So, and that yeah. that goes into the whole. This is a magnifying glass, not a guru. It's it, it right. Helps. It helps me get to put it in context. Um, we do have a con uh, comment from um, oh Deborah moving the collection to the front. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, and then Anthony was asking, what do you mean to the front? The front of the library. Oh. In other words. Um, um, by the front, I mean toward the front of the library and on the main path that people take through the library. Grocery stores always put their candy and high profit right. items on end caps right. or towards the front. It's kind of the same idea, I believe. Uh, Re I research shows, yeah, research shows that the stuff that doesn't circulate is that there's a big difference between in circulation, even 15 feet from the. This is done like in the 1930s, I think. Um, um, I can pull up the data showing that uh, it's a big difference in circulation from a shelf that's right near the door and one that's 15 feet inside the door. There's a big difference in circulation. Um, also, there's a big difference in circulation from the books from near the top, near the top of the shelves, not the very top, but 
in the you know around where your chest is versus the ones at your at your knees. And so one thing, one recommended recommendation I make for weeders is to pull those books that are in the back of the library, pull those books that are at people's knees and ankles, and put them on display to give them a chance of being seen uh, before you weed them. And so, and then if they're if they check out, they're still a value, and they should be put back in the collection. If they're not, uh, then you then you weed them. So, you, but that requires slow weeding, not not um, Holocaust weeding, uh, where you weed slowly as shelves, uh, you know, over a period of a year, so you can have a chance to display the books. Okay. Wait. Um, we do have one more comment from S. Biederman. Uh, actually, you have it right yes. in front of you. Does this retain and save a list of all weeded books? No, this does not. You would have to do um, something else. Um, 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 your catalog probably wouldn't do it. Um, so um, um, you would need to, though some catalogs have a kind of an archival thing where you can delete it, but you can, but you can save that record in another place. But I would recommend creating another another tool for listing the weeded books. Uh, why would you want to do that? What is the point of that? We have some folks typing, so. Sure. And just to give folks a heads up, we are coming on 10 o'clock. Um, so it looks like we're probably going to be running a little late with Q&A. Uh, feel free to stick around. We will be here as long as you need us. Um, but we totally understand if you have to get away covered, ask for the like. Here is my um, email address for those of you who want to carry on the dis discussion later. Um, um, I won't be able. I have to do a presentation this evening, so I won't have I won't have time to discuss now. But I would tomorrow. So you can send me any other questions that we can't get answered um, here. Well, we do have uh, a few posted right now. If you have time for them, um, sure, I, I do. I do. Up and didn't realize that they were appearing below on the chat. Pamela says, "Please explain the 3.0 and turnover rate again, please." The 3.0 turnover rate. Okay, it's the, it's the. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Anthony actually answered that. It means each item in the collection had an average of three uses in that year. Yes. Yeah. Um, S. Biederman, because some board members were questioning about purchasing some books that they said had been purchased by a former librarian, and then I repurchased some as I didn't know that they had been weeded, which is the reason for uh, oh. keeping a weeded list. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. Yeah. That, um, is, that is a problem. Um, you, when you weed, so, um, a certain percentage of your books will be requested later, and yeah. Yeah. Do, do you provide certificates of attendance for CPE, CPE hours? Uh, I know here at the State Library we do not. I'm not sure um, if we. I don't. I don't do have that. one. I can. Um, I can make up a little certificate and send it to you. Yeah, but like, there's nothing official backing it. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. I mean, we can do up a quick certificate, and send it out, but there's nothing official at all. Um, really backing that up. So. And we have a number of people saying thanks. And please display Chris's email address. He actually put it up there in the chat. I will go ahead and put it out um, in our main window. It looks like you're done sharing that. Yeah, if we click through it, it's at the end there. If we click through at the very end. There you go. Right there. Um, Desiree Ray Churchill says we also sometimes get donations of books and would be helpful to know if we weeded those in the last few years. Good reason yeah. to keep track of the weeded. Um, some more thank yous. A lot more thank you. Uh, Gina, you had a question?
You can press the talk button up uh, in the audio video panel if you have a microphone or type it into chat. You thought you were hitting applause. <laughs> so there you go. You have some applause, Chris. Certainly Excellent. welcome all kinds of comments and criticisms and thoughts because this is an ongoing, like any tool, you want to perfect it and make it better. And your suggestions were really great. Um, the ones there, some of them, uh, and and all of them were were certainly relevant to the to the circulation. I may not be the person that has the uh, the programming sophistication to apply it. Uh, that is, I'm uh, on the so lens of assistance. I just don't have the cataloging background or the question development back background. I mean, be more than happy to hear your suggestions. I already took one of them, which I thought was great. So if you can um, um, make any other suggestions, I might be able to think through that. Well, it looks like folks are heading out. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, please join us, uh, not in July. We're taking a vacation for July's first Tuesdays, but August 5th, uh, 9 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, we're going to be talking about user-friendly subject headings with children's books. So please join us. We'd love to have you. It's the same URL to get in as you use this time around. And uh, Chris, thank you very much for presenting. Uh, it's a wonderful presentation. Had a lot of, a lot of interest, it looks like. It was a wonderful show. Thanks.